you guys watch this uh, show, Dynamite? Yeah? It was an explosive addition. So anyway, it opened up with uh, Wardlow uh, fighting for the TNT title against Scorpio Sky. There's my notes. Wardlow beat Scorpio Sky to win the TNT title. They had a bunch of uh, fake, uh, whatever they call them, American Top Team members out there. And uh, Scorpio didn't want him involved, but eventually they got involved. And then they just got destroyed one after the other. But during the distraction, he tried to hit a belt shot on Wardlow. Went for the cover. Wardlow kicked out. And then Wardlow ran him and uh, Dan Lambert together. Hit the Powerbomb Symphony, three straight power bombs. Put the foot on the chest, pinned him, TNT champion. Huge ovation. Place went crazy. They shot all of the confetti up into the air. Big win for old Wardley. Look, he was about to cry. So he is the new TNT champion. And no MJF. Although they didn't mention his name, but he was nowhere to be seen. Had a great John Moxie promo about the main event. Had a show-long storyline where Mark Sterling and Tony Nese are trying to get people to sign a petition to get Swerve fired from AEW because he kept turning on people in Battle Royals. And apparently he got some signatures. So i got to find out who those people were. We had a Christian Cage and Luchasaurus appearance. Uh, this week's Christian line was about Jeff Hardy, where uh, Matt says he's he's friends with the Jungle Boy, and Christian says, you're not a friend. Me and Luchasaurus were friends. You're starting to make your brother sound like the sober one. And there wasn't a lot of heat for the first part of this promo, but Manny threw that line out, and these people were furious at this guy. And they started all these chants, which I can't say here on the air. And uh, finally, Matt had heard enough about uh, his brother. He tries to attack Christian. Luchasaurus kills him, and they choke slammed him through the timekeeper's table. So it looks like we'll probably get either Luchasaurus or Christian versus Matt Hardy. If we go by the storyline, it should be Luchasaurus because Christian doesn't want to wrestle. He just wants to make money. So we'll see where they go. Clips of the great Matt Menard promo regarding blood and guts. We had uh, Claudio and Jake Hager doing a talking segment backstage. And uh, Jake Hager actually cut a better promo than Claudio, believe it or not. They're going to have a fight next week on Dynamite. And Claudio has vowed to go 3-0 and against Jake Hager. We had Keith Lee and Swerve versus The Butcher and the Blade. This match was an... At- you know, sometimes I go, if they had 100 matches, 99 would be better than this one. Well, with these two teams... I'm pretty sure if they had 1,000 matches, 999 of them would be better than this one. They botched one spot after another. Botch. Why do I hear classical music in my headphones? Classical music? Or is that someone's car alarm? Uh, There's a bunch of sirens going off. I see. Okay. Cops and whatnot. I apologize, everybody. Uh, yeah, they, uh, I mean, just one botched spot after another. And then finally, the last couple of minutes, uh, they did the spot where Keith Lee accidentally hits Swerve and knocks him down. And so you think, oh, man, here it comes. And uh, Butcher and Blade got some near falls. But, in fact, Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland wiped him out, got the win. Afterwards, Powerhouse and Ricky Starks came out. And Ricky Starks is doing his best Ric Flair in 1997 impersonation here, maybe 1999. And uh, they talk about being the best tag team in the world. So the Young Bucks come out, and they offer a triple threat match for next week with the titles on the line. The Young Bucks have offered to put the titles up on the line against these guys. And uh, the fans are chanting for FTR. So uh, they definitely got a big match on the horizon. Young Bucks versus FTR for all the titles. But they're going to hold it off for a bit. Eddie Kingston promo. He's talking about uh, how he's vowing to make Chris Jericho bleed. They cut backstage. Jericho's on the Titan Tron, and they slam Kingston's good friend Ruby Soho's hand in the door. She's injured, and Jericho says, you will be next. Dark Order promo. This was just basically a segment to uh, remember the great, the late, great Brody Lee Evil Uno's out there. John Silver, Alex Reynolds at a J10, negative one. And uh, QT Marshall comes out. He's being a jerk. So they throw him in the ring. They beat him up. And then uh, little Brody grabs a mic and attempts to say, I could pin you right now, QT, but I'm going to wait till I'm 18. And they pointed out that the first guy that Brody Lee beat was QT. And so literally we've got an eight-year storyline to... 
negative one turning 18 and beating QT Marshall in his first match. At least QT's got a job for the next eight years. We had Roosh versus Penta. Had a pretty good match. There were some uh, there was some sloppiness here. And uh, I always love these Lucha matches where one guy tries to tear the mask off the other guy, but he does too good a job. So, like, poor Penta's mask actually fell off. I need to put it back on. And then he's sitting here, he's trying to tie his mask back on. And uh, it, it, every, every spot he does, he has to adjust his mask afterwards. So it was not perfect, but uh, Roosh looked like a star, and Penta's great. And he ended up uh, low-blowing him, tearing the mask off, rolling him up for the win. And they've been doing a lot of mask gripping and everything. And if this were, you know, Mexico, we got mask versus hair with Penta versus Roosh coming up. But I can't fathom that happening anytime soon. So I guess they just wanted to give him a win in an underhanded manner. The announced Samoa Joe J. Lethal is official for Death Before Dishonor, ROH television title. We had a segment backstage setting up uh, Orange Cassidy versus Tony Nese for Rampage. If Orange Cassidy wins, he wins. If he loses, he must sign this uh, deal. And according to uh, Sterling, if they have one more signature, then uh, Swerve will be fired. What? Who okayed that? We had the acclaim to the gun club versus Bear, Bear, Leon Ruffin, and Fuego Del Sol. So uh, acclaimed and the gun club had issues the entire match. Finally, when it's over, everybody's mad at each other. The gun club starts beating up the acclaimed. Billy Gunn jumps in. He pulls his sons off. He's trying to play peacemaker, but of course it's a swerve! And he turns on the acclaimed, lays them out. The gun club and the acclaimed have split. Which on one hand sucks, because I loved this unit together. But the acclaimed are... They're baby faces. They're big time baby faces. And I guess they decided to pull the trigger on it and... Now they can feud. Thunderstorm, which is Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm, beat Nyla Rose and Marina Shafir with a combo Thunder Fire Driver. It was uh, it was all right. I wouldn't say it was great, but uh, some of the stuff was good. It's like, you know, these matches. Sometimes they botch some stuff. Sometimes the stuff looks great. It's hit and miss. Kind of like an NXT 2.0 match sometimes. Am I going to get heat for that one? Well, I'm just an honest man. So anyway, baby faces won. Jade Cargill and the baddies are backstage, and Jade's angry about this whole Layla Gray situation. Stokely says, well, since we could have an interim champion, we could have interim baddies. So she's on, she's a probationary, on probation or something like that. So uh, Jade says, you better deliver or you're in trouble. $1,100. Can you believe that they were able to get somebody for so cheap, only $1,100? Yeah, $1,100. Well, you don't want it's old school. If you say you offered her thirty thousand dollars, the fans are like, ah, this is stupid. But if you offer eleven hundred dollars, that's believable enough that she'd do the job for that. Uh we need to get my buddy up here, Fauntleroy, to do these. I'll do that after the break. Then we've got uh FTR doing a promo. They challenged the Briscoes. Guys see that FTR Briscoes match? Holy smokes, that match was awesome. Well, they're gonna do it again at Death Before Dishonor. Because they're going to try to get some buys for this show. And then the main event, John Moxley, Brody King. A very, very good match. Hard hitting. Beat the hell out of each other. Got to, uh, Brody King got to shine. Uh, no blood. That was interesting. And uh, then at the end, uh, Moxley finally put him in the bulldog choke. Switched to a sleeper. Uh, Brody did the uh, big show mankind spot where he fall backwards and squish the guy. But then Moxley puts it on again. Ref stoppage. And boom, show immediately goes off the air. So no post-match angle or anything like that on TV. And uh, that was a show. Any thoughts, Mike? We don't cut all day. My DVR cut off the end, so I was not able to see the end of the match, even though I actually had it extended out by a couple of minutes. At least I thought I did. You know, it was funny because as the match is going on, the announcers are screaming at us to make sure we set our DVR. It's like, that's not how the DVR works. The DVR works because I'm not watching the show. The DVR works because I left. So they're telling us to set your DVR, set your DVR. And uh, my YouTube TV, it caught it all. Barely, but it got it. But I would bet that, uh, I would bet many people that DVR'd it didn't get to see the end of the show. 
with hindsight being 2020 and it's all fantasy type of booking here stuff, but ultimately now with the young bucks making the challenge last night and them holding the titles, I was thinking it's like when you and Dave were talking about it this morning, it's like, you know, I wonder if having FTR taking the belts off of Jurassic express and doing that turn with Christian if it wouldn't have been better with hindsight being 2020 to wait until this moment where Christian, who has been putting these guys in title matches that they felt uncomfortable about and didn't really understand what he was doing, that would have been a perfect way to actually do that match that they're actually doing next week to me. It would have been to do that, have FTR win those belts from Jurassic Express and from Ocon and, you know, have have that whole thing happen. Have them end up with all the belts there, then have Christian turn. I was just kind of thinking maybe they could have waited a little bit on Christian. But with that said, his promos are the one of the best things on in all of wrestling. He, he's getting, he's saying everything that is the, the cheapest of heat, but it seems to be working for him. And I don't know what it is. I mean, it's almost like you're just waiting for the guy to, whereas it's offensive for somebody else or it would be, you know, low class or whatever. It just seems like it's part of his bit. It's almost like waiting it is on part Don, of his bit. Don Rickles. What to insane do an thing is he going to say this week? Well, that's exactly it. And it's, you know, maybe it'll be some point where it does go too far or it is bad, but for somehow, some way he's been able to pull it off and we'll see how long they continue to go with it. But him on the mic has been awesome. Absolutely awesome. I think that the reason they didn't do your idea is because they want to do a big match for All Out with all the belts on the line. So, therefore, we have to have two teams splitting the belts up until that point. I presume that's that's the idea here. Unless somebody wants their belt back before September. This is how the show begins, really. Oscar does a back kick, camera cut. She does a back fist, camera cut. She starts to run, camera cut. She hits a hip attack, camera cut. She drops to her knees, camera cut. She throws a kick, camera cut. She stands up and screams, camera cut to people brawling on the floor. I was furious, do you understand? I wanted to shut the show off and not watch anymore. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.